Hello Stream Leaders. In this video, you're going to learn how you could integrate Slick Grid in your Streamlit app. And so without further ado, let's dive in. So Slick Grid is a framework for implementing grid-like data frame. And if you could have a look at the original website here, it is written in JavaScript, vanilla JS, um, and it's compatible with Bootstrap. And there's actually several implementation of Slick Grid. If you go here, which is kind of like a, a mono repo that aggregates all of the ongoing projects around Slick Grid so that it is in a kind of like a single stop shop where you could get all of the information from the same place. So they also have like a live demo website, which is provided here or here. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. So this links to all of the ongoing projects that you could, you know, have a look at, um, like for Angular or for Vue, um, et cetera. And so this is the quick start for using the Slick Grid Universal. Um, do check it out. Let's have a look at the demo. So if you go here, this is the GitHub repo uh, of the creator. Uh, the Slick Grid uh, Universal. And here is the documentation, right, that I've shown you just a moment ago. Um, here are some of the icons that you could use in this implementation. And here are several examples, like for example, on implementing a basic grid, you could make it toggle between light and dark theme. You could add, you know, toggle between having pagination at the bottom or not. And there's also a support for adding grid menu. Uh, yeah, so all of this is working if you're implementing JavaScript based um, application. But for all of us here who are, you know, fellow Streamlitters, if you want to implement this in our Streamlit app, it is now possible. And so Tiago Texera, Streamlit co-founder, and currently director of product management at Snowflake had created this component called Streamlit Slick Grid. And the component here will allow you to utilize the Slick Grid data, you know, grid platform directly in a Streamlit app. And you could simply do a pip install Streamlit Slick Grid, and then you could use it in your Streamlit app. And if you are interested in contributing to this component, you could follow the instructions here, and then you could send a PR over our way. So I've implemented the example code, which is provided in the folder here, Streamlit Slick Grid. And if you click on example.py, this is the example app that we're gonna be using. So I've created a a fork of that particular example app. And then here we have it right here. So in this example app, it encompasses about 300 lines of code. And we're gonna go over that in just a moment. But before that, let me show you the Slick Grid demo app in a Streamlit app. So let's start scratch. Let's refresh the app. So a point of note here is that you have to reshape your data in a hierarchical way, uh, which will be you know, used in this particular uh, data frame or grid environment. Uh, you cannot readily use the pandas you know, data frame readily in this. So you have to do some data shaping or reshaping, uh, which we'll, we'll cover uh, in a short moment. So as the hierarchical data, you could click on it, and then you'll see the underlying kind of like a sub category. If milestone is a category, epic is like a child of the parent category here. And if you click on epic, you also have tasks that are a child of the epic um, like subcategory. And so you'll notice that it's hierarchical um, in nature here. And the Slick Grid implementation allows you to use 
uh, different visualization uh, UI here. So the example here are the progress bar um, and this segmented uh, bar as well. And you could customize the color in the example app that uh, we'll be showing in, in a short moment. And yeah, this is the demo using the Slick Grid um, implementation. So as I already mentioned, you could install this by doing a pip install, streamlet Slick Grid. You could use this locally on your own computer. You could also use it on Sys or Streamlit in Snowflake as well. And you could, yeah, you could deploy it to the community cloud um, using this as already shown in the demo. And so yeah, let's have a look at the demo example app here. So disclaimers are provided here. And then we're importing Streamlit as the ST, which is the UI that we're using here. And then we're using, you know, like NumPy, Math, and Random in order to generate the random um, data that we're going to use here. And then we're importing various functionalities from the Streamlit Slick Grid um, component. So here we're going to kind of like make the layout as a wide uh, for the app. And then lines 36 until 82 is a function for generating the example data that we're going to use here. And we're using the math, the NumPy, um, and also the random library for generating the random data. So you'll notice here that the random data that we're generating will, will have the values that are going to be hierarchical, uh, which we'll be reshaping in just a moment. So here it is. We're assigning the example data into the data variable, and then we are reshaping it in a tree-like hierarchy uh, by making the hierarchy as follow, milestone, followed by epic, followed by task. So let's have a look here. Milestone, followed by epic, and then you have several tasks underneath. All right, and so here are some of the variables that we're going to define for the colors that will be used in the table. So yeah, you can feel free to modify the colors to your own preference. And so these are the example colors that we'll be using here. And a point of note here is that all of the full, like the entire list of options of what's possible with Slick Grid could be adapted from this particular list here. So do note that this example is just kind of like a starter to get you started, and then you could fully flesh out all of the functionality of Slick Grid of what it has to offer by understanding their API, and then you could, you know, customize this further. So do note that this is a work in progress, and yeah, it helps you get up and running. So this columns variable will provide all of the settings parameters for the widgets or UI that we're going to be using in the Slick Grid implementation here. So we have the colors for the grid, how many decimal points. Yeah, more colors like white text on red um, background color, black text on orange uh, background color, white text on green uh, background color. So this is the color of the text. These are the colors of the background. And yeah, all of them are customized here. Uh, we also have the range slider as well. And yeah, these are like the, the parameters that we're setting for the start, finish, and effort-driven uh, fields, which are provided here. Start, finish, effort-driven. Um, and yeah, others are also provided as well. So if you go back and have a look right here, complete, stages, duration. All right. So, so all of that are in the variable called columns. So that encompasses lines 130 to lines 240, 252. 
All right, and there's additional options that you could, you know, customize as well, which is assigned to the options variable here. This is for enabling filtering. This is setting the height to be 500 for the minimum. And yeah, there are several others as well. All right, and then on line number 320, we're creating a out variable. And then we're using the, the actual grid here, the select grid. And then we're assigning the data as the data that we're going to use in this grid implementation. And then the columns and options variable that we had just defined earlier on. And then we're assigning a key of my grid value. And then we also specify the parameter for on click to rerun. So every time we click, it will rerun the grid. All right. And Lines 323 until 331, we're going to display a dialogue upon clicking on a row in the data frame or on the grid. So if you click on a grid row, if you click here in the first row, this dialogue will pop up and then we're going to see all of the underlying values of that particular row and then yeah, this is just a random chart that is being generated. So note that here, this is ID zero, the first row. We click on the second one, it's ID one. We click on the third one, ID two. Click on the last one here, ID 27. Okay. And we have all of the values that are used in the rules. Like you have here 59, 12, 36, which is right here, 59, 12, 36, 69, 69 is right here, the percent complete, right? So all of the values are provided here. And let's have a look back in the code. Yeah, so it's right here, 324 until 331. So you see the random chart here in the scatter chart. And then you have, you know, the, the details of the items of the specific row that we clicked on. And then finally, lines 334 until 336, we're just kind of like showing um, the dialogue um, using this function to actually use it in the uh, in the app. Okay, so all of the functionality here are from the Slick Grid implementation. So you could have a look at what's possible from here, and then you could try to implement that in the Streamlit app. So it might take you some time to, you know, go through the example, take a look at some of the options that you could um, implement. Uh, what I find very interesting is the real-time trading platform here. So you see that the number updates in real time. Um, I haven't yet validated that whether this would work in the Streamlit app, but it's worth trying. And yeah, do let me know in the comment section if you're able to reproduce this. Uh, it might be a, a little bit of an advanced uh, configuration that might be needed. Um, but yeah, I think it's something very interesting and yeah, worth trying. And so if you reach this far in the video, please drop a balloon emoji so that I know that you're still here. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy streamlining.